Uh, we will study the tunneling effect of one-dimensional particle in the box today. Uh, if a particle is completely confined inside a one-dimensional box with an uh, infinitely large energy barrier, the tunneling effect is zero. However, as long as the energy barriers, in this case V0, is finite, uh, we will observe tunneling effect. So over here, uh, the total energy of the particle is 8% of the energy barrier V0. We still observe a non-zero wave function here and here. That means it's possible to observe the particle outside the box. It is true that when the particle is outside the box, its kinetic energy is negative because the kinetic energy is the total energy minus the potential energy. Uh, we get negative 92% of the uh, potential energy V0. But it's fine, as long as overall the expectation value of the kinetic energy of the particle over the entire space is positive. It's okay to observe uh, negative kinetic energy of the particle in a certain region, such as here and here. Uh, if the total energy of the particle is 32% of V0, and we observe a larger value of wave function here, so it's more likely to observe the tunneling effect. Uh, how about 69% uh, of V0? So again, uh, we see a larger uh, magnitude of the wave function here and here. That means it's more likely to observe uh, the particle outside the box. So quantitatively, we can compute the tunneling probability by solving the Schrodinger equation first in a tunneling region. In the tunneling region over here, you have a potential energy of V0. So this is the potential energy of the particle, and this is the kinetic energy of the particle. The sum is the Hamiltonian, H. And then we're solving each psi equals E psi. And from here, we get this. The second derivative of psi is equal to kappa squared times psi. And what is kappa squared? It's simply 2m times V0 minus E. So it comes from this E minus V0, and then there's another negative sign here, so it becomes V0 minus E times 2m times 2m divided by h bar squared. So overall, this guy is positive in the tunnel region because V0 is greater than E. So and the kappa is also a positive real number. It's the square root of 2m times V0 minus E divided by h bar squared. And this part is actually negative kinetic energy. And then we simply uh, solve this differential equation. We get this solution. It's a exponential function. We can see the wave function decays exponentially. Uh, there's another solution, e to the power of positive kappa x, but uh, e, to the power of e to the power of positive kappa x uh, is, uh, can be uh, infinitely large when x is uh, uh, infinitely large. So, that's not a legitimate solution. So this, uh, again, uh, quantum mechanical postulate one dictates that the wave function must be finite. And x is the tunneling distance. So we have this tunneling probability. Uh, the tunneling probability density is um, the wave function squared. And uh, the wave function squared is simply uh, this uh, equation squared. Uh, sorry, I, I forgot to uh, have this a uh, squared. So this is, this is supposed to be a squared. All right. I forgot to square this a. And I, I did square the exponential function. So uh, this 2 becomes 8. So I squared it. And uh, if we compare the uh, probability density of the particle at a distance x versus a longer distance x plus d, that means, you know, what if the, uh, uh, the particle uh, tunnels uh, by a distance of uh, x plus d versus x? So this is uh, additional distance of d. And then if we look at the ratio, the ratio is this. Uh, this is to get rid of this a squared, the normalization factor. All right. And then I have uh, four numerical examples here. Uh, or use this, um, the ratio of probability density here. So I'm going to just uh, show you the same equation here. But this time, I'm going to give you real numbers. Let's say we 
look at the tunneling of an electron. This is the mass of electron. Let's say the electron tunnels by a distance of one angstrom. And let's say V0, the uh, barrier is two electron volts. So we can convert it to here. Let's say the total energy of the particle is 69% of V0. And then we can compute V0 minus E, which is actually uh, very simple, 10 to the power of negative 19 joule. Uh, we know the value of each bar, and uh, this is the reduced Planck constant. Uh, and then we plug in all the numbers here, we got 45%. So that means the probability density of electron decays to 45% of the initial value after a additional tunneling distance of one angstrom. If the total energy of the electron is smaller than the barrier by 10 to the power of negative 19 joule. So this energy barrier is also the potential energy of the particle in the tunneling region. I'm assuming the potential energy is a constant in the uh, tunneling region. It's uh, 3.2 times 10 to the power of negative 19 joule or two electron volts. All right, that's the first example. So we can see, well, 45%, it's significant. Uh, what if uh, the energy of the particle is much smaller than barrier, only 8%? And then we still compute V0 minus E. V0 minus E this time is actually uh, three times the uh, initial value of this example. Okay, over here it's uh, 10 to the power of negative 19 joule. Now we have three times 10 to the power of negative 19 joule. But uh, look at this. The uh, V0 minus E is inside the square root. So I'm going to use the previous value here uh, and then multiply the exponential number by uh, square root of 3 and I got 25%. So it's still significant, 25%. Even if the total energy of the particle is only 8% of the barrier, still we observe a significant tunneling effect. Now we're going to look at uh, the tunneling of an atom or a molecule. I'm going to just multiply the mass of the electron by 10,000. So this uh, typically, I think a atom uh, weighs uh, roughly 10,000 times uh, more than an electron. And uh, typically, a molecule weighs even more than that. But anyway, I'm, I'm just using this, uh, this uh, easy uh, 10,000 number here. And I have the mass here. And then, because the mass appears in the square root, again, I'm going to have to take the square root of 10,000. Uh, uh, multiply by 0 0.8 to 1.8, it's it's here. I mean, re, I'm reusing this numerical example one. Uh, the only change I made is the mass. I increased the mass by 10,000. And the square root of 10,000 is 100. So we have e to the power of negative 80, which is uh, 10 to the power of negative 35. Uh, this is negligible. That means uh, it's very difficult to observe the tunneling of atoms or molecules. Well, it's still possible if we make this is make this v naught minus e really really small, or if we make this d the tunneling distance really really small. Uh, numerical example three. This time we set the uh, tunneling distance to be one nanometer instead of one angstrom. So this is ten times larger. Uh, if we look at this uh, uh, calculation again, I have to kind of multiply the initial point. Uh, 8 by 10 and then I got uh, this number 0 0.0003 so actually uh, after a tunneling distance of 1 nanometer this uh, electron um, the probability of the electron uh, uh, becomes only uh, 0 0.003 percent it's it's pretty small but it's detectable uh, what if we change the tunneling distance to be 10 nanometers or 100 angstroms. Okay, now the tunneling probability is 10 to the power of negative 35. It's negligible. And actually, it's a good thing. That means actually it's very sensitive to uh, the, the, the tunneling probability is uh, very sensitive if you change the distance. And uh, this uh, uh, more quantitatively, you can say the tunneling pro probability decays exponentially with the tunneling distance. And this results in the invention of the scanning tunneling microscope. Uh, so basically, it's going to just, uh, this STM measures the tunneling distance of the electron by uh, looking at the uh, uh, electric current 
uh, resulted from the electron uh, tunneling. And again, this, uh, this uh, um, electric current is very sensitive to the tunneling distance. So we can easily uh, determine the distance between the uh, metal tip uh, in the STM detector and the surface of uh, just whatever surface you're looking at.